Jesus says he will return. Now, this is the objection, not me saying. Jesus says he will return to an unbelieving world. An unbelieving world. Luke 18, 8, part B. When the, Jesus is speaking. When the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? Wow. Jesus is even asking, when I return, will there be faith on the earth? How Lindsay wrote, in the original Greek, this question assumes a negative answer. In other words, when Jesus asked this question, the assumption is, no, I will not. Borland, in the Dallas Theological Seminary's uh, Bible Knowledge Commentary, says, improvement in the worldwide spiritual climate is here, is not here predicted. So therefore, it's contrary to post-millennialism. Well, how shall we answer this one? Capital A, the question answered. A little amusing, a little side here. A lot of times I've been on radio programs being interviewed, and they're call-in programs. I'm being interviewed on this one 20 years ago now, but I'm talking about post-millennialism and our expectation of worldwide conquest of the gospel. And a caller comes in and says, I appreciate what you've been teaching, but let me ask you this question, which Jesus asked. When the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? And I said, yes. Notice it's a question. It's not the answer. So the first part, and he said, he fumbled around for a minute, and I said, that's the question. But then I explained how we could understand it. Lindsay is simply wrong. In the Blaste Bruner Greek lexicon, uh, uh, grammar, the question, the way that it, that it is framed, expects an ambiguous answer. It is intentionally, intentionally ambiguous. It does not expect either positive or negative. It throws out an ambiguous situation before the people. And again, he is encouraging his disciples, consider this. When I return, what are conditions going to be? And so he's wrong. In capital B, the statement, mis uh, the statement understood. The statement understood. Interestingly, this question does not even deal with the future existence of Christianity at all. In the context, the, the statements found in Luke 18.8, the context opens in Luke 18.1. In Luke, I'm sorry, Luke, is it 18 or 8? 18. Yeah, I've got a typo here. Luke 18.1. He was telling a parable to show that at all times they ought to pray and not lose heart. So what he's saying there in verse 8 is not when the Son of Man returns at the end of history will he find believers on the earth. What he's saying is when I return, will I find this kind of faith? As a matter of fact, I'm not going to get into this because it would take some time. But I think he's talking about his judgment coming in the year 70 when he comes to bring judgment upon the temple because he speaks of it being speedy and all of this. But that's, a, that's another issue. And so what he's saying is, is that kind of faith going to prevail? He's not talking about will the Christian faith be here, but will his followers, will believers, still be engaged in fervent <coughs> prayer? And again, when he asks questions, it's not just, well, I wonder if this is so. When he's asking questions, it's to prod his people to reflect upon their own prayer life or whatever. And and say, well, yes, Lord, I will continue to do that. So again, these questions, these framed up uh, concepts are designed to be ethical or spiritual prods to righteousness.